Hello and welcome back, or welcome if you've not been with us before. My name is Liz and I'm here from the Worcester Art Museum and I'm bringing you today's Art Together online lesson. Today we're going to be studying collagraphs and that's when you take a print, which is a type of art like stamping, where an artist carves out or adds to a plate uh, and then you can take paper and ink and get an image from that. So it's printmaking and collage where you take a bunch of different things, either paper or natural materials or anything else that you might find, and you put those pieces together. Maybe you layer them, maybe they're next to each other, and you collage them together to make an artwork. So a collagraph is actually taking collage and using it as a printing plate. So we'll be looking at that a little bit later. But first, we have our book. Now the book that I have for us today is not about printmaking or collage, but it is one of my very favorite books, and it's called Beautiful Oops by Barney Salzberg. This book is about mistakes in art and how they can be more like an opportunity and less like a problem. Beautiful Oops by Barney Salzberg, printed by Workman Publishing, New York. Oops! A torn piece of paper, see that paper, is just the beginning. Every spill has lots and lots of possibilities. Bent paper Right there, it's happened to me, is something to celebrate. A little drip of paint lets your imagination run wild. A scrap of paper can be fun to play with. A stain has potential if you play with its shape. Look at that. They turned the stain into a frog. Holes in your paper are worth exploring. When you think you have made a mistake, oops, think of it as an opportunity to make something beautiful. So the reason that this book fits really well with our lesson today is that sometimes when you're searching for textures and you're doing rubbings and you're doing printing, you don't have direct control over what your artwork looks like at the end. So it's a little bit of an experiment and you'll always sort of be surprised by what you find. So when you're doing your rubbings today and when you're doing your prints, embrace what you think might be a mistake Say hello to that oops and just make it beautiful. All right, now that we read the book Beautiful Oops, the next thing we're going to be doing is look at some collagraphs from the museum's collection for inspiration. So, the first piece that we're going to look at right over here is by James Kleeg. Now, this seems to have some images that we might be able to identify, but it really is sort of abstract. Even though this bottom part over here sort of looks like maybe a bird figure um, or something else, this is quite abstract or not real. It doesn't look like what the world looks like when we use our eyes. So this 
piece is called Experiment Paris 2. He did many series of these. This one is all one color, but he did do a few that had multiple colors on them. So when you're doing your project, you don't have to stick with one color, but you could do more colors of ink, two or three, or you could use as many crayons as you want when you're doing your rubbing. So this second piece over here, like Claire Falkenstein, is untitled, which means she didn't give it a name, and that's perfectly fine. It's from 1963, and you can see that it looks like she used something wooden for her plate, which the sort of golden pieces that are inked look like. Because if you look at the background, you can really see sort of that wood texture. So don't forget to think about what you're using as your background. Maybe you have some wood that you can use as your plate to give your background some texture. And if you don't, and you can use cardboard like I'm going to for my example. So this is a good example of the uh, piece having more than one color. So the background looks like it's been all rolled in black and then perhaps they wiped off some of the um, abstract sort of netting or geometric designs there. Almost looks like fallen sticks. And then they re-rolled that with a different golden color ink and then they took their print. Now the third piece that we're looking at is by Christian Kruk and this is a little bit more representational, or represents, looks like something. This is actually also untitled, but it's also called Small Black Flower. So, we can see why immediately from looking at it. Here we have, sort of down towards the bottom, a vase that these flowers and plants are in. It is printed in black, so again, a one color or monochromatic piece. And it does have a lot of detail. So there's sort of this almost diamond checkerboard pattern-ish type thing around the outside. And then there's the flower stems and all of the detail within the flower blossoms themselves. I'll actually zoom in a little bit um, so you can see those details because this is a fairly large work. So when you're looking at these three colographs, I'd like you to think about what items the artists may have used to get these textures to then print from. So we can always cut cardstock and cardboard to whatever shape you want, but don't forget that maybe some of these pieces were also found um, and then incorporated or used in the artwork. So the next thing I'm going to do is introduce you to the three projects. The first is a um, texture hunt with rubbings, and then the second and third are the collagraph printing and rubbing. So you'll be able to choose which one or maybe do all three. Well, I hope you enjoy, and there's more information about these artworks online. If you go to the PDF um, lesson, you'll be able to find where to go to find more information about them. The first one is a treasure hunt for textures. And what you're going to use for that is just very simple materials. You can use crayons. You want to peel them, and if they're broken, that's fine. And just regular print or copy paper. You're going to take your paper, and you're going to fold it in half, and then in half, and then in half, and then in half again. So four halves, and then you're going to unfold it. And then you're going to take your paper, and you'll see you have all of these different squares. There should be about 16 of them. And you're going to go on a texture hunt. So you're going to take your crayon. You can use more than one color. And you're going to go around and see how many textures that you can find, either right in your house or your home, if you have the ability to go out for a walk, um, maybe you can find some textures there. Some great places to find texture are actually your floor and the bottom of shoes that are fairly clean. Um, you can also look if your parents um, or aunt or uncle or wherever you're living, if you have some special dishes that might have some bumps on them, that's a good place to look too.
And don't forget, fridges sometimes have some texture um, and some other appliances. So look really carefully. So I started mine a little bit earlier. And you can see that I found a whole bunch of textures. I still have a couple of spaces because I'm going to cut away to my hands and just show you quickly how to do the rubbing. But I'll point out where I found some of these textures. So this is the texture from my refrigerator. Uh, this is a texture from a picture frame. It was only one line, so I actually moved the paper and rubbed it a few times. This is from a plate that we have. This was from outside. We have some concrete. This was from our floor. This was from tile in another room. This was from a basket. Uh, let's see. This was bark on a tree. This was the bottom of one of my shoes. Let's see. What else do we have? Oh, yep. This was another shoe that was a slipper. And this was sort of a carved piece of furniture. And this was from a sequined basket. Uh, so there's textures all around us. So when I say texture, I mean something that if you have your hands, you can feel. So if I were to feel my watch band, it's sort of smooth, but a little tiny bit bumpy. If I were to feel this bag, it's very bumpy. It's sort of made out of very, very hard little bumps. If I were to feel this cup, that is sort of smooth and bumpy. So go ahead and look for different textures and fill up your paper. Now when you're done, and I'll show you how to do this, you can sort of make this look more like a quilt by adding some marker or colored pencil. So that'll be really fun. That's our first project. And I'll cut away to my hands, finishing up those rubbings in the house, just so that you can see that. So for our second project, we're going to be making that collage plate for printmaking or rubbing, that holograph plate. So you want to look around and gather different things that you can use for texture. These might be very different from what you used if you did your crayon quilt rubbing project. Examples that I have here are some bubble wrap. I have some foil left over. I have something from an onion bag. I have, you know, this sort of stuff that you get off of cans. And then I have a bunch of like cardboard pieces too. So you're going to take something that's a little bit larger like this, that's cardboard and hard. And you're going to sort of play with all of these different things and decide how you want to arrange them. So, maybe you want to do something like this in the back and then that on top. This project can be completely abstract with no image in mind, or you could try to do something. So I have two examples. Here's my example for my abstract piece. It doesn't really have an image, image in it, no dog or cat or flower. It does remind me a little bit of under the ocean, so I think that's maybe what I will call it, but I want to see what it comes out like first. So if we look here, we notice that I layered some things. So this bubble wrap I put down first, and then I put down some of this um, cardboard, foil, some onion paper, some more cardboard. Very abstract. This piece is much less abstract, and it shows you can do this in any size. It could be small, it could be big. So this piece, you know, I have sort of a person's face, and I have a shirt, and I have eyes, and nose, and a mouth. So you can go realistic or not realistic. And I'll show you next how to do the rubbing part of these projects, and then how to do the printing part. And then you can choose how you want to go about it, and what you want to do for your project.
So here we'll get started and I'll start with my larger plate and the crayon rubbing. Now you'll notice that sometimes it's hard to get a texture if what you're trying to rub is soft. So look at the difference between that plate and this other plate which didn't have as many soft things like the bubble wrap. The image can really come through. You may have found that when you did your texture hunt too. Now we're going to transition to inking the plate and getting a print rather than a rubbing. My ink, I've rolled it with my brayer or roller. See how I'm using an extra piece of paper just to protect my table? And then I'm going to take some paper, lay it on top, and really rub it, sort of gently. I don't want to put a hole. And then you can see the difference between the rubbing and the print. So here we go. Now I'll pull a print of my larger plate, and you'll see the difference between the crayon rubbing and the printing of this plate as well. Sometimes you might have to add a little bit more ink. And we're gonna rub this one too. And this is much more impressive as a print. Here we go, I'm gonna experiment by putting my two plates together. So I'm re-inking everything. Every time you pull some ink off of your plate, you'll need to put some more on. I'm taking my paper, placing it down, rubbing it, making sure I'm getting all of the corners, all of that texture, and then I'm gonna pull it off. There we go. Now I've used my plates to make many different prints and rubbings, as you can see here. And what's great about printmaking rubbings, you can make tons of artwork with the same plates. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoyed Beautiful Oops, looking at those three prints from the Worcester Art Museum collection and creating your artwork. We'd love to see it, and if you'd like to share it with us, feel free to snap a picture and then post it on Facebook or Instagram, and you can use the hashtag WhamArtTogether. We're gonna to be starting a Flickr account to put these images in in the gallery, and we would love for you to be able to participate. If you would like more information about any of the pieces that you saw online, you can find more information on both what the museum is offering and our searchable collection at www.worcesterart.org. All right, well, I will see you next week, and until then, have a creative time. Bye-bye.